Boards and booze, booze and boards, drink some beers, fight some hordes, drank too much, forgot our swords, ran back home, filled our gourds, got drunk again, sang some chords, boards and booze, booze and boards, with Mickey and Jeb. Yep. Hi everyone, this is Booze and Boards with Mickey and Jeb. He's Mickey, I'm Jeb. Uh, today's episode three, and that is, like we said, Imperial Settlers. Uh... Who's this by? No, oh, just going to name his name. <laughs> okay. We spent about 20 minutes trying, trying to, to figure, figure out how to pronounce this. Ignancy? Ignacy? Tre... Treswizik. Treswizik. Yeah, it's yeah from Poland. What can I say? <laughs> we we butchered it horribly. Yeah, well, uh, we're, we're sorry because we actually do like the games. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, and it's by Portal Games. That okay. was the easy one. So, uh, Imperial Settlers. It is a worker placement game, right? I guess uh, it's worker placement card kind of a mush up. Uh, we've got ages ten plus, forty five to ninety minutes, one to four players. Yep, and the core box comes with four factions. Uh, it's the, what the barbarians, the Japanese, Egyptians, and Romans. Romans, yeah. Yep. So that's what comes in the core. Uh, I think there's an expansion coming out soon. Uh, Atlanteans. Yeah, that we wanted to play that, but it wasn't out when we did this video. So uh, we'll just be playing the core, the core set, and that should be enough for you to get a good idea of how the game plays. If you think you'd like it. Uh, I don't know, is there anything else we need should say? I uh, Probably not, there's not a lot we can show you until we start showing you the, sh the setup because uh, you'll, you'll need to be able to see the zoomed in, so um, I guess we will be back in a second, uh, we'll get all the things in place and show you how to set this game up. Yep, alright. Alright, so we will start with the setup of the game. The first thing that you want to do is grab the scoreboard, and let's see, this is the round marker, so it just keeps track of what round you are. On the side of the victory point board, there are five uh, spaces that represent the five rounds that the game takes place over, so you will start by putting it there to mark that it's round one. Uh, this whole thing keeps track of victory points, so uh, when you grab a person, you get a little token, and you'll put that on there, so that represents your score, or the amount of victory points you have at that time, and every time you increase, you just move it up, so uh, everybody will put that, and I believe on the back of the little token, there's a plus 50, so if you ever go past 50, you can keep track that way. So, uh, Jeff, uh, yes. one thing that I think we forgot to mention during uh, the intro yeah. was actually what the point of the game was. Oh, the, the point of the game <laughs> is to, uh, to get the most victory points. And you do that by having the, uh, you're creating an empire. Yeah. So if you, true. if you have, if you, well, not necessarily if you have the biggest empire, but that's the point of the thing. You have the strongest empire at the end of the game based on victory points. So yes, you have to score all the victory points, but um, you do that by building an empire with the uh, factions that Jeb indicated when we did the uh, intro to the game. So, sorry for that. That's a Not quick overview right. of, uh, of what we're actually trying to accomplish in this game. Yep. So, this is the victory, point, the victory Point board that keeps track of it, so I think that's about all that we're going to do with that, so I will take it out of the picture. This token indicates the first player, so that will go to whoever's decided as the first player. And I think every round it will move to the next player, right? That's correct. Moves so. to the left every round. All right, so that's what that is. When you begin the game, every player is going to get to choose a faction. So like we said, there's the Romans, the Egyptians, the Japanese, and the Barbarians. So say if I chose the Romans, I would look at the name and whatever color that their name is in, you want to grab the associated deck of the same color. So, I know Mickey had mentioned to me that that's not the best way to do it, and I kind of agree, because other than that, you can't tell. So... And you can be a boy or a girl. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> girl and boy. So, whatever side you flip on. So, you get your deck, as well as that, as this, and there's also the little tracker that you put on your victory point board. So, that is what you get when you choose a person. 
Uh, everybody will choose a group. And before we begin gameplay, we're going to explain some of the resources. Well, it, I, Everything in the game is a good. Everything that you can acquire in the game is a good. The apple slash tomato is a resource, the wood is a resource, and the stones are a resource. Um, these are these are these are people, these aren't actually considered their goods, but they're they're not a resource. It's important to remember the difference between uh, a good and a resource. But in, in general, these three are resources and still goods. Everything else is a um, is is a good in the game. So Jeb will tell you what the other pieces are here. Yep, so as Mickey explained, you've got the tomato, apples, the wood, the stone, and peoples. So these goods over here, these are shields. Uh, they are used uh, to help when somebody's trying to raise, that's R-A-Z-E, which means destroy, uh, one of your places. So these kind of help for protection, so that's what the shields do. Uh, the swords are what you need to, to raise somebody's building or your own building. Uh, that's pretty much it for them. Uh, these gold tokens, actually, they represent any resource. Yeah. yeah, so when you have one of these, you can spend it as a tomato, a wood, or a stone. So they're kind of like the, uh, the variable token. The tomatoes slash apples are actually, the, are, the, the token is a food token yeah, in the food, game. Food. Yeah. Uh, these are uh, just a token that, say if I have five stone, I could put a stone on there, and it represents I have five stones. So that's, I don't think I've seen that in any of the three or four player games that I've done, but I think it might come into handy with, what, two players, and possibly one player. And the last thing is these tokens, which are just for the Egyptians, so they are used specifically for the Egyptians, and they have their own ability within the, the Egyptian cards. So I think that's pretty much all of the, the tokens. Okay, so the next part of setup is once you have your faction placed in front of you, you're going to have your own deck, as Jeb mentioned, also, within reach of all players, will be a common deck. Okay? Once everybody's decided their faction, to start to get ready to set up, everybody is going to, t starting with the first player, which you can determine randomly, uh, they're going to take two cards from each deck. So they're going to take two common cards, and they're going to take two of their faction deck. Okay? Then it's going to go to the next player in order, and they take two, and they take two. You don't deal uh, how you normally would in, in a lot of different games. This is one of the aspects that makes this game very interesting, is you have your own deck, and you have a common deck. So anytime you're allowed to draw a card, you're allowed to decide which deck you want to take it from. You can take it if uh, you get to go draw two cards. You can take two from this, two from this, or one from each. Any combination you want. Okay? So once everybody has their hand of four cards to start, then everybody, now, now you're set up and the game is ready to start. So the first phase of the game is called the lookout phase. Everybody gets to draw one card from their faction deck. Okay? Then the first player... And we're going to assume that we're playing with four players today, okay? So, we, the first, starting with the first player, they're going to deal the number of cards equal to the number of players plus one out of the common deck, okay? Then that player gets to look at the cards that were dealt, select a card, and put that in their deck. Then going around the table, everybody else gets to select their card. Okay, So all these cards got selected. Then there's one left over, and guess what? It gets discarded. Now, the first player deals, again, cards equal to the number of players, plus one. Except now, the last person that chooses gets to pick first in this round. So everybody pick, 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 
last person, and then a discard. Okay, now you're ready to begin. So that's your hand of cards. Now you go to the production phase. Now if you'll notice on the player board, there is a production. Right there, where my thumb is. <laughs> you take whatever's on there. Now for the barbarians, which we have a picture of, there are five workers. There is one raised sword. And there's one defense. Everybody's going to get a defense. But another unique thing about this game is every faction starts with something different. So don't assume that that's how everybody starts. You're, each card has a different um, starting amount of production. And you're going to get that production every single turn. And then as you build buildings, you will also get uh, production things that will happen at the beginning of each turn. Okay. So, other unique things about the, the player board. This right here, in your feature section, has something that you can store. At the end of each round, everything that you have in play is going to get wiped out for in, in terms of resources and things like that, and you're going to start over, except for whatever you can store in here. The Barbarians can actually store any number of people, so if I had leftover people, I would get to store them there. And this is the action thing that, uh, action space that indicates what you can do with your workers. It's universal for anybody, but basically two workers can be spent on any resource or drawing a card. Yep. So you can use two for a piece of wood, two for a piece of stone, two for a food, or to draw a, deck, a card from either deck. Okay, so I'm going to uh, let Jeb talk for a little bit because I'm tired of talking. Alright, so the next phase is the action phase, and when this takes place, it goes from the first player, they get to do an action, and then it goes to the next player, they do an action, and it goes around until everybody passes. Correct. Um, once you pass, you're not able to do another action after that, so... And you can't be attacked. Right. So, uh, the things you can do for actions, let's see, the first thing you can do for an action is build a location. So if I have this card, uh, in the top left it has a cost that says pay to build. So this one would need a wood and two stones if I wanted to build it. So if I had that in my, su my supply, I could get rid of those, put them back in the, uh, the common supply, and then I would put this building uh, wherever it says that it needs to go. So what is this? Oh, yep. Yeah. It helps. Uh, every time you forget that. Yeah. <laughs> in the text of the card, it has in italics, whether it's an action card, a feature, uh, card. feature or a production. production. So since this is an action card, when I build it, I will put it over here. Uh, com cards from the common deck will go on your right side, while cards from your uh, faction deck See, this is an action, so that would be placed on that side. So that's a way to keep them separate. Uh, so back to the actions. That was an action. You pay the build cost and you place it here. So now that building is there in your empire or whatever. So the next thing is making a deal. To make a deal, you need a food token. So say this guy had a food token. What you would do to make a deal is you spin one food token and you take a card in your hand that has in the bottom of it, it says make a deal to produce. So what happens then is you take that card, turn it upside down, and you place it under the deals portion of your action board. Mm -hmm. So once you make a deal, you automatically get that resource. So this one was a card, so I would get to choose to draw from either of the decks. So I'll just draw that one. What the deals do is when it gets to the production phase, when you take your production resources, you also get whatever uh, items that you have deals in. Yep. So I'll also notice, uh, you probably don't notice, but the deals are only on yep. faction, faction cards. cards. Okay, so you're never going to see any of these blue sections on a common card. The next action you can take is to raise a card. 
So that involves the sword tokens, which I've shown you earlier. Uh, you can do you can raise two ways. The first one is raising a card from your hand. So to do that, you would spend one sword token, and then it's not on that one. It's on this one. Uh, in the top right, it says raise to gain whatever resources. So if I spent the one sword and then I discard this card, I would get a food and a person. So I would just grab those from the supply and add them to my resources. The other way to raise is if I have two swords and say my opponent has this building. I'm just going to put this over here to represent my opponent. That's a bad example, Jeff. Okay. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Okay. <laughs> Here's one that my opponent has. So if I want to raise their building, I would have to spend two sword tokens to destroy it. And what happens is I spin the two and this flips over and it stays under their section like this because there are some cards that to, co to build you need a cost to get rid of a building. So raising it means you spin two, pick an opponent's building, you get to gain the resources on that building and then they flip it over. And this turns into what they call a foundation. Okay? A foundation. So there are costs and cards, like Jeb pointed out. This one here is an example of one. The cost of that is has a little building in it. So that means that you have to sacrifice a building or a foundation to pay the cost. And you can see that it actually has the foundation symbol down there. Yep. Um, so it, it doesn't have to be flipped over to pay that cost. You could discard that one if you wanted to. Yep. Okay. And then one other thing with raising is if this is your opponent's building and they have a shield on it, you normally would have to spend two to raise an opponent's building, but a shield means you have to have one extra. So if they have three shields on it, they'd have to spend three extra swords to raise it. So that's one thing to keep in mind with raising cards. I'm not sure you can get that many shields, but that's but you get the point. Because yeah. you only get one shield, and I don't know if the, how many other cards they are that would actually boost it any more than that. Um, the reason I, I said uh, just a second ago a bad example... Uh, was because Jeb pulled a faction deck with a raise on it, and there's only one faction deck that has the raise symbol on it, and that's the Japanese, because they're a little different than the other cards. So, just like I said, faction cards are the only ones with deals. Normally, the common cards are the only one with the raise symbols up in the top right, like Jeb pointed out. However, the Japanese faction, because of a little unique uh, trick they have, uh, all of their cards have the raise symbol, but they can protect their um, their faction cards with samurais. So that's that's why I just pointed that out real quick when he uh, grabbed a different card. So uh, not a big deal, but I just wanted to point it out, point out that the common cards are the ones with the raise. Everybody else's faction except for the Japanese do not have that. Yep. Uh, another action you can take on your turn is to activate a location that has the word action. And you, let's see, this one says, action, spend a person and a sword, may be activated twice. So normally you can only do actions once, but if it says you can do it twice, then you can do it twice. What happens is, if I want to do this action, uh, oh, actually it says spend a person to gain a sword. So I would spend the person by putting it on this card, and then I would gain the sword. So the resource that you spent kind of indicates that you've used it already. So on my next go around, I could do the same thing because this one says I can do it twice. You said you could only normally you can only do them once. Yeah, normally okay. you can only do it once. Okay. The last thing you can do, uh, as Mickey said earlier, is this action, which is what everybody has: spend two people to gain one of those four items. Yeah, uh, they, those are the actions you can take. I just want to go over a few of the cards that you might play. So this is a feature card. A feature card goes in the middle row on either side, depending on what kind of card it is. This one says building bonus of one victory point for each golden um, building in your empire. So in this case, they do count themselves. So if I was able to play that card, I would get a victory point for building that and a victory point because that gold one's already in play. And then kind of from, and additionally it says you get to draw a card then that's kind of a one-shot type of thing. So, this is also another example of, oh, well, I got my bonuses from that, so maybe I want to get rid of that later on to pay for a cost of a card like that. 
The other type of card that can come into play is a production card. Production cards go on the top row. Similar to when you make a deal, after you pay the cost for the card, you immediately get whatever it produces. So in this case, Lumberjack's route, I would get one piece of wood. Also on a, a Lumberjack's route, it has a building bonus. They all don't have this, but a building bonus indicates that you get a one-time bonus when you build that. So I would get the, a piece of wood from the playing, actually playing the production card, and then I'd get the building bonus, and that's a one-time thing. When the production phase rolls around again, I would get a production of the one piece of wood from this card, as well as the one card from this deal. So as you can see, as you start to build up cards, you'll start to produce more. So I think that was all the things you can do in the action phase, and there's only one phase left, right? The cleanup phase. Yep. So during the cleanup phase, that happens after everybody has passed. So um, obviously, when everybody's passed, uh, you either they either can't do anything, they don't want to do anything, or or whatever. So you take all your resources off all your cards and your. Actually, since these are the barbarians, they get to keep the people. So right. there was any resources that are in your pool that you can keep. You just move them to your to this area to, to show that you're storing them. Everything else gets cleared off the board. Right. So once you're wiped out, except for for storage, the first player marker will get passed to the left, and then you will move the round marker, which was on this on the board that we moved away, that would go to round two. And then you start the new round. The, uh, the new round starts exactly the way we uh, started the game, or not, not totally, not the setup part, but everybody draws a faction card, and then the new first player will do the drafting, I call it a drafting phase, where you do the deal the cards, equal to the number of players, plus one. That person starts, they get to pick first, around the table, do it again. The last person that picked gets to be the first person to pick yep. in that. You have, so then you have a new hand of cards and you're ready to start the production phase. Again, in the production phase this time, you would refill everything from this portion of the board, everything that you have in deals, and everything you have across the entire production line. You will gain those resources now. You so. gain those resources now. Uh, unless I'm wrong, these two things aren't going to do anything in the production phase. I'm pretty sure I've never seen a yeah. car that, that feeds off of anything like that. Right. So that's how you, uh, that's how you get, get going in uh, Imperial Settlers. And like we said, the game lasts five rounds, so keep that in mind because sometimes that, that plays a part. So uh, Other yep. than that... Um, yeah. Oh, no hand limit. Yes, there is no hand limit. No hand limit. You can have as many cards in your hand as you want. And other than that, I think that's about everything for setup, so we are going to clean this up and start ourselves a game of Imperial Settlers.